the whole world and all its treasures, and the sea, air, and earth, were here when you were born. Begin to think of the untold and undiscovered riches all around you, waiting for the intelligence of man to bring them forth. Look at wealth as the air you breathe. Get that attitude of mind, as Emerson said to the woman, you know, who wanted to prosper. He took her down to the ocean. He said, take a look. She said, oh, there's plenty of water, isn't there? He said, look, and well, I'd weld that way, and you'll always have it. Yes, realize it's like the tide, forever flowing out, forever flowing back. A sales manager said to me that an associate of his sold a million-dollar idea for expansion to the organization. You can have an idea with a fortune. Wealth is a thought image in your mind. Wealth is an idea in your mind. Wealth is a mental attitude. He also told me that there were more millionaires now in the United States than at any time in the history of the country. You can have an idea worth a fortune, yes you can. Moreover, you are here to release the imprisoned splendor within you and surround yourself with luxury, beauty, and the riches of life. I learned that it is necessary to have the right attitude towards money. Well, food, clothing, all these things. When you really make friends with wealth, you will always have a surplus of it. It is normal and natural for you to desire a fuller, richer, happier, and more wonderful life. Look upon money as God's idea of maintaining the economic health of the nation, of the nations of the world. When money is circulating freely in your life, you're economically healthy, in the same manner as when your blood is circulating freely you are free from congestion. Bigger now to see money in its true significance and role in life as a symbol of exchange. That's all it is. It has taken many forms down through the ages. Money to you should mean freedom from want. It should mean beauty, luxury, abundance, a sense of security, and refinement. You're entitled to it. Being poor is a disease. It is a mental attitude. A young woman, a very good writer, who had had several articles accepted for publication, said to me one time, I don't write for money. I said to her, what's wrong with money? It's true you don't write for money, but the labor is worthy. What you write inspires, lifts up, and encourages others. When you adopt the right attitude, Financial compensation will automatically come to you freely and copiously. She actually disliked money, you know. Once she referred to money as filthy lucre, going back, I suppose, to the early days where she heard her mother or somebody say, money is evil, you know, or the love of money is the root of all evil, and all these things without any understanding at all. It's a rank superstition to say money is evil or a filthy lucre. This woman had a subconscious pattern that there was some virtue in poverty. There isn't. It's a sickness, a disease. I explained to her that there was no evil in the universe and that good and evil were in the thoughts and motivations of men. It would be foolish to pronounce uranium, silver, lead, copper, iron, cobalt, nickel, calcium, or a dollar bill evil. How absurd, grotesque, and stupid that is. The only difference between one metal and another is the number and rate of motions of electrons revolving around the central nucleus. A piece of paper, such as a hundred dollar bill, is innocuous. And the only difference between it and copper or lead is that the atoms and molecules with their electrons and protons are arranged differently for the physical evidences of money. Here's a simple technique she practiced, which multiplied wealth in her experience. My writings go forth to bless, heal, inspire, elevate, and dignify the minds and hearts of men and women, and I am divinely compensated in a wonderful way. I look upon money as divine substance, for everything is made from the one spirit. I know matter and spirit are one. Money is constantly circulating in my life and I use it wisely and constructively. Money flows to me freely, joyously, 
and endlessly. Money is an idea in the mind of God. It is good and very good. That's a wonderful prayer. It eradicates that superstitious nonsense about money being evil and things of that nature, or there's some virtue in poverty, or the Lord loves the poor. All of that is rank superstition. It is frightful ignorance. That's all it is. This young lady's changed attitude towards money has worked wonders in her life, and it will work wonders in your life, too. She has completely eradicated that strange, superstitious belief that money is filthy lucre. She realized that her silent condemnation of money caused money to fly from her instead of to her. Her income has tripled in three months, which was just the beginning of her financial prosperity. Some years ago, I talked with a clergyman who had a very good following. He had an excellent knowledge of the laws of mind and was able to impart this knowledge to others, but he could never make ends meet. He had what he thought was a good alibi for his plight by quoting from Timothy, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which is in the book of Timothy, in the sixth chapter, tenth verse, forgetting what followed in the seventeenth verse of the same chapter. In other words, taking it out of context when Paul charges the people to place their trust or faith in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy, that's also in the book of Timothy. Love, in biblical language, is to give your allegiance, loyalty, and faith to the source of all things, which is God or the living spirit or the life principle in you. You are not, therefore, to give your allegiance, loyalty, and trust to the created, but to the Creator, the eternal source of everything in the universe, the source of your own breath, the source of your life, the source of the hair on your head, the source of your heartbeat, the source of the sun and the moon and the stars, the source of the world and the eschaton. If a man says, all I want is money, nothing else, that's my God and nothing but money matters, he can get it, of course, but he's here to lead a balanced life. Man must also claim peace, harmony, beauty, guidance, love, joy, wholeness, and all facets of his life. How can he live without courage, faith, love, goodwill, joy in this world today? There's nothing wrong with money, not a thing in the world, but that's not the sole aim in life. To make money the sole aim in life would constitute an error, a wrong choice. There wouldn't be anything evil in it, but you'd be imbalanced or lopsided. You must express your hidden talents, you must find your true place in life. You must experience the joy of contributing to the growth, happiness, and success of others. We're all here to give and give your talents to the world. God gave you everything. God gave you himself. You have a tremendous debt to pay because you owe everything you have to the infinite. Therefore, you're here to give life and love and truth, your ideals, your dreams, your aspirations, you're here to row the boat and put your hands on the wheel. Contribute to the success and happiness, not only of your children, but of the whole world. To accumulate money to the exclusion of everything else causes man to become imbalanced and lopsided and frustrated. Yes, as you apply the laws of your subconscious in the right way, you can have all the money you want and still have peace of mind, harmony, wholeness, and serenity. You can do a lot of good with it. You can use it wisely, judiciously, and constructively. Like anything in nature, you can use your knowledge or philosophy in a constructive way, or you can begin to brainwash impressionable minds with communism and all the rest of it. I pointed out to this minister how he was completely misinterpreting the scripture by pronouncing pieces of paper and metals evil when these were neutral substances, for there is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. He began to see all the good he could do with more money for his wife, family, and parishioners. He changed his attitude and let go of his superstition. He began to claim boldly, regularly, and systematically, Infinite Spirit reveals better ways for me to serve. I am inspired and illumined from on high, and I give a divine transfusion of faith and confidence in the one presence and power to all those who hear me. 
I look upon money as God's idea and it is constantly circulating in my life and that of all the people who surround me. We use it wisely, judiciously, and constructively under God's guidance and God's wisdom. This young clergyman made a habit of this prayer, knowing that it would activate the powers of his subconscious mind. Today, he has a beautiful church, which he wanted the people built for him. He has a radio program and has all the money he needs for his personal, worldly, and cultural needs. I can assure you he no longer criticizes money. If you do, it'll fly away from you because you're condemning that which you're praying for. Now follow this technique which I'm going to outline for you, and you'll never want for wealth all the days of your life, for it is the master key to wealth. The first step is to read it out in your mind that God, or the life principle, or the living spirit, is the source of the universe, the galaxies in space and everything you see, whether you look at the stars in the sky, the mountains, the lakes, the deposits in the earth and the sea, all animals and plants, the life principle gave birth to you, and all the powers, qualities, and attributes of God are within you. Come to a simple conclusion that everything you see and are not aware of came out of the invisible mind of the infinite, or the life principle, and that everything that man has invented, created, or made came out of the invisible mind of man. The mind of man and the mind of God are one, for there's only one mind that is common to all individual men. Everyone is an inlet and outlet to all that is. Come now to a clear decision that God is the source of your supply of energy, vitality, health, creative ideas, the source of the sun, the air you breathe, the apple you eat, and the money in your pocket. But everything is built inside and out of the invisible. It is as easy for God to become wealth in your life as it is to become a blade of grass or a crystal of snow. The second step is to decide now to engrave in your subconscious mind the idea of wealth. Ideas are conveyed to the subconscious by repetition, faith, and expectancy. By repeating a thought pattern, not an act, over and over again, it becomes automatic, and your subconscious being compulsive, you will be compelled to express wealth. The pattern is the same as learning to walk, swim, play the piano, type, or drive a car. You must believe in what you're affirming. It's not mumbo-jumbo, it's not idle affirmations. You must believe in what you're affirming, like you believe that when you put seeds in the ground, they grow after their kind. And the seeds are thoughts deposited in your own subconscious mind. Realize that what you are affirming is like the apple seeds you deposit in the ground and they grow after their kind. You can imagine these seeds growing from your conscious to your subconscious mind and being reproduced on the screen of space. By watering and fertilizing these seeds, you accelerate their growth. Know what you are doing and why you are doing it. You're writing it with your conscious pen and your subconscious mind because you know well it is. Walk down the street and you see it. Can you count the flowers along the road as you drive? Can you count the sands on the seashore? Can you count the stars in the sky? Can you count the wealth that you're walking on? Yes, underneath you may be oil, gold, silver, uranium. If you ever think of the riches of the sea, the soil, the air. So third step, repeat the following affirmation for about five minutes, night and morning. I am now writing in my subconscious mind the idea of God's wealth. God is the source of my supply, and I know God is the life principle within me, and I know I'm alive, and all my needs are met at every moment of time and point of space. God's wealth flows freely, joyously, and ceaselessly into my experience, and I give thanks for God's riches forever circulating in my experience. Step four, when thoughts of lack come to you, such as I can't afford that trip, or I can't meet that note in the bank, or I can't pay that bill, 
never, never finish a negative statement about finances. This is mandatory. Reverse it immediately in your mind by affirming, God is my instant and everlasting supply, and that bill is paid in divine order. If a negative thought comes to you 50 times in one hour, reverse it each time by thinking and affirming, God is my instant supply, meeting that need right now. After a while, the thought of financial lack will lose all momentum, and you will find your subconscious is being conditioned to wealth. If you look at a new car, for example, never say, I can't buy that, or I can't afford it. Your subconscious takes you literally and blocks all your good. On the contrary, say to yourself, that car is for sale. It is a divine idea, and I accept it in divine order through divine love. This is the master key to wealth. It's impossible for any sincere person to practice this technique and not have all the wealth he or she needs all the days of your life. So follow it, and you're setting the law of opulence in operation. It will work for you as well as for anybody else. The law of mind is no respecter of persons. Your thoughts make you wealthy or poor. Choose the riches of life right here and right now. A sales manager sent me one of his men for counseling. This salesman was a brilliant college graduate, knew his products very well, and was in a lucrative territory, but was making only 5000 annually in commissions. The sales manager felt he should double or at least triple it. In talking to the young man, I found he was down on himself. He had developed a subconscious pattern or self-image of 5000 a year. In other words, that's all I'm worth. He said that he had been born in a poverty-stricken home and that his parents had told him that he was destined to be poor. His stepfather had always told him, you'll never amount to anything, you're dumb, you're stupid. These thoughts were accepted by his impressionable mind and he was experiencing his subconscious belief in lack and limitation. I explained to him that he could change his subconscious mind by feeding it with life-giving patterns. Accordingly, I gave him a mental and spiritual formula to follow, which would transform his life. I explained to him that he should, under no circumstances, deny what he affirmed, because his subconscious mind accepted what he really believed. Your subconscious mind accepts your convictions, what you really believe. So, believe in God's wealth and God's riches, which are all around you. By the way, he affirmed every morning before going to work. I'm born to succeed. I'm born to win. The infinite within me can't fail. Divine law and order govern my life. Divine peace fills my soul. Divine love saturates my mind. Infinite intelligence guides me in all ways. God's riches flow to me freely, joyously, endlessly, ceaselessly. I'm advancing, moving forward, and growing mentally, spiritually, financially, and in all other ways. I know these truths are sinking into my subconscious mind, and I believe they will grow after their kind. A year later, when I met this young man again, I discovered that he had been transformed. He had absorbed these ideas we had discussed, and he said, I am appreciating life now, and wonderful things have happened. I have an income of $25,000 this year, five times greater than the previous year. He had learned the simple truth that whatever he inscribes in his subconscious mind becomes effective and functional in his life. That power is within you, and you can use it also. The young boy who's operating this machine while I'm broadcasting, his name is Robbie Wright. He told me about his uncle who used to work in a bank, and this uncle wanted to make more money for his wife and his children. He was always affirming, God is mainstream sublime, divinely guided in all ways. Infinite spirit opens up a new door. He told me that his uncle was in town about two months ago and that his salary now is $200,000 a year, all his expenses paid, and he was getting $40,000 when he started to realize the truth about himself and he's able to do great things and living a wonderful life down south in another state. All this is an idea. 
All it was with an ID in his mind. Wealth is an idea. A radio is an idea. Television is an idea. An automobile is an idea. Everything you look at is an idea. Suppose you destroyed all the automobiles in the world due to some holocaust. Well, an engineer could run them off, couldn't they? And we'd have millions of them in no time. Use the following meditation for assurance and achieving financial wealth. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. I know that my faith in God determines my future. My faith in God means my faith in all things good. I unite myself now with true ideas, and I know the future will be the image and likeness of my habitual thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart or subconsciously, we see from this moment forward, my thoughts are on whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely and of good report. Day and night I meditate on these things, and I know these seeds, which are thoughts, which I habitually dwell upon, will become a rich harvest for me. I am the captain of my soul. I am the master of my faith, for my thought and feeling are my destiny. Prayers and affirmations are not for the purpose of changing God or the living spirit of the life principle or influencing the divine. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You don't change God, but you align yourself mentally with that which was always true. You don't create harmony, harmony is. You don't create love, God is love. That love of God is within you. You don't create peace, God is peace, and God indwells you. But you must claim that the peace of God floods your mind, you must claim that the harmony of God is in your home, your harmony in harmonies, in your pocketbook, and your business, and all phases of your life. All of good is available to each of us. Our prayers and affirmations are for the purpose of bringing our own mind to the point where we can accept the gifts that were given to us from the foundation of time. For God is the giver and the gift. The oil was in the ground before you were born before any man walked the earth. So was gold and silver, uranium, lead, copper, and all the metals that we use today. They were all there. Didn't it take a little intelligence of the mind of man to find these things? Yes. So if you send two men to Utah, and one man is a geologist, or he may be also a mineralogist and he finds nothing, another man goes in, and in the first five minutes he finds a vein of uranium or silver in the same territory. In the same land, where was the wealth? The wealth was in the mind of the second man. He believed in a guiding principle. The other fellow found nothing. He was walking on it. So there's a guiding principle that will lead you, and that's what led men to find gold, silver, oil, lead, and all these things. We don't need to work on conditions. We need only to work on ourselves. The only place we can cure our lack and limitation is in our own mind. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. When we have done it there, we shall find that the world, your world, that is, your body, your environment and conditions, will be a mathematical reflection of your inner state of mind. Whatsoever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you have received them, and you shall have them. That is the basis of all successful prayer whether for the healing of our bodies, for prosperity, success, for achievement, or for material benefits. Once you convince your deeper mind that you have the thing you want, it will proceed immediately to bring it to pass. You might say to me, how can I convince my deeper mind, my subconscious, that I have riches or any other good thing when my common sense tells me that bills are piling up, creditors are after me, the bank is calling up for the mortgage and for the money I owe. You can't if you keep thinking about debts and obligations and how much you owe. You will only magnify your misery. But here is a truth about the laws of your mind. Your deeper mind accepts as effect whatever you repeat to it in convincing tones. Often enough, just the same way you learn to walk or had a thought pattern in any act, 
whether it's swimming, walking, playing tennis, or golf, and you repeat it over and over again. You know what you were doing and why you were doing it. You want to learn to walk. You want to learn to dance. You want to learn to swim. So finally, your subconscious assimilated the pattern, didn't it? And then you swim automatically. You walk automatically. The same procedure applies when praying for wealth or anything else. Once your subconscious accepts the statement as a fact, it proceeds to do everything possible to bring riches to you. Now that's the whole purpose of affirmations. To convince yourself of the truth of that which you affirm, then your deeper mind will bring these things to pass. Many men say to me, Oh, I got an affirmation from someone, and it said, I am rich and prosperous now. I am successful and very wealthy. That affirmation, he said, succeeded in making me much more aware of my need. Because, you see, he believed more in poverty and lack than he did in the riches all around him. So, I explained to him, I said, you must turn away from that pattern and come back. Change your belief. Your subconscious accepts what you believe. I said, look around you. Realize that God created you and the whole world. It's an invisible spirit within you. Everything is made inside and out of it. It started your heartbeat. It's the air you breathe, the water you drink, the fruit you eat. Therefore, turn away and turn within and change that. Say, I recognize the eternal source of my supply. God is the source of my supply. All my needs, spiritual, mental, material, are met at every moment of time and point of space. And God's wealth is circulating in my life, and there's always a surplus. So, by day and by night, I'm advancing, moving forward, and growing spiritually, mentally, materially, financially, intellectually, in every way. And all things be ready, if the mind be so. It has done unto me as I believe. Before they call, I will answer. While they're yet speaking, I will hear. Oh, how I love thy law. Let it be my meditation, both day and night. And the law is, I am what I contemplate. I am what I believe myself to be. According to my faith, is it done unto me? God gave you richly all things to enjoy. God made you rich. By then, are you poor? And as he began to realize the source of the infinite ocean of supply, the source of the very hair on his head, the source of the power that enables him to lift a chair, the source of the grass, the source of the hay in the field, the source of the cattle on a thousand hills, he began to realize the source. He aligned himself with it, and then it made sense to him. Then he realized that he was writing in his subconscious mind the idea of wealth, of growth and prosperity. He changed his belief to a belief in the riches all around him, instead of poverty, which was a false belief in his mind. Don't you know there's enough root crops in the tropics to feed all humanity? Nature is lavish, extravagant, bountiful. God gave you richly, yes, all things to enjoy. These things, he said, I've said unto you that my joy might remain in you and your joy might be full. Heretofore you've asked for nothing. Now ask that your joy might be full, and I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Heretofore you asked for nothing. Now ask that your joy might be full. But to ask, you see in the Bible, is to claim. And as Paul says, you claim it boldly. But you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So, if you have a lot of debts and obligations, a lot of bills to pay, don't worry about them. Turn to the source, which is endless. Remember the farmer. What he says to you, he says, Well, I don't worry about the weeds. The grain is growing, and it will kill all the weeds. That's what the farmer tells you. Likewise, as you focus on your good, on guidance and right action, and the eternal source of your supply, whether it is mental, spiritual, or financial, you need. There's but one source, not two. And as you turn to it and give thanks for that endless supply, then all the weeds will be killed. 
thoughts of lack and limitation will die in you, and God will multiply your good exceedingly. Pray for joy by claiming it. The joy of the Lord is my strength, the Bible says. Repeat that to yourself, and after a while, you'll be amazed at what will happen to your bloodstream and to the general circulation. Don't keep analyzing it or gritting your teeth about it. Just know that joy is the in of life, the expression of life. Don't work like a horse at it. Use no willpower, no muscle power, no blood vessel power is involved in this mental and spiritual therapeutic technique. Just know and claim that the joy of the Lord is flowing through you now and wonders will happen as you pray this way. Freedom and peace of mind will be yours as a result. If you have peace of mind, you'll have peace in your pocketbook, in your home, in your relationship with people, for peace is the power of the heart of God. And there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of my God. The city of God is your mind, the people who dwell there. Well, you know very well who dwells there, your thoughts, ideas, images, beliefs, opinions. Make sure they conform to the divine standard. A woman said to me, I was blocked financially. I had reached the point where I had not enough money for food for the children. All I had, she said, was five dollars. I held it in my hand and said, Go. God will multiply this exceedingly according to his riches and glory. And now, filled with the riches of the infinite, all my needs are instantaneously met, now on all the days of my life. All right. She believed that. It wasn't idle words. You don't gain the ear of God by vain repetitions. No, you must know what you're doing and why you're doing it. You must know that your conscious mind is a pen and you're writing, engraving something in your subconscious mind. And whatever you impress your subconscious mind with will be expressed on the screen of space. It'll come forth as form, function, experience, and events, good or bad. So make sure you plant that. Which is lovely and of good report. She said, I affirmed that all my needs are instantaneously met now, and all the days of my life for about a half an hour, and a great sense of peace came over me. I spent the five dollars freely for food. The owner of the market asked me if I wanted to work there as a cashier, since the present one had just gotten married and left. I accepted it, and shortly afterward, I married the owner, my boss and we have experienced and are experiencing all the riches of life. This woman looked to the source. She didn't know how her prayer would be answered because you never know the workings of the subconscious. She believed in her heart and the blessings of the infinite followed. To believe is to live in the state of being. It also means to be alive to the eternal truths. Her good was magnified and multiplied exceedingly because the subconscious always magnifies what you give attention to. There is a presence and a power within you and you can use it and you can stir up as it flows as the gift of God within you. For God is the giver and the gift and everything has been given to you. Therefore, you can tune in and claim guidance, right action, beauty, love, peace, abundance, security. You can say to yourself, well, God's ideas unfold within me. Bring me harmony, help, peace, and joy. If you're in business, you're a professional, you're an artist, you're an inventor. Just sit down quietly and say, God reveals to me new creative ideas, original wonderful ideas, which bless humanity in countless ways. And then watch the wonderful ideas come to you and they will come because when you call, it answers. Remember what it says in the Bible. Call upon me, I'll answer you. I'll be with you in trouble. I'll set you on high because you have known my name. And then the name means the nature. Well, the nature of infinite intelligence is responsiveness. Call and the response comes constantly. Affirm, feel and believe that God multiplies your good exceedingly. 
and you will be enriched every moment of the day, spiritually, mentally, intellectually, financially, and socially. What's your thoughts? Never talk about economic lack and limitation. Never talk about being poor or in want. It is very foolish to talk to your neighbors or relatives about hard times, financial problems, and like matters. Count your blessings. Begin to think prosperous thoughts. Talk about the divine riches present everywhere. Realize that the feeling of wealth produces wealth. When you talk about not having enough to go round and how little you have and how you must cut corners and eat the cheapest meat, these thoughts are creative and you are only impoverishing yourself. Use the money you now have freely. Release it with joy and realize that God's wealth flows to you in avalanches of abundance. Look up to the source. As you turn to the divine presence within you, the response will come. It is written, He cares for you. You will find neighbors, strangers, associates adding to your good and also to your supply of material things. Make it a practice to pray for divine guidance in all your ways and believe that God or the Supreme Intelligence is supplying all your needs according to His riches in glory. Claim it boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Paul says, and grace, when it's removed from its mystique, is simply the mathematical orderly reflection of your habitual thinking and imagery. In other words, there's supreme intelligence that responds to your conscious thinking and imagery. Pray for divine guidance, therefore, in all your ways. As you make a habit of this attitude of mind, you will find the invisible law of opulence can and will produce visible riches for you. Recently, a doctor told me that her constant prayer was as follows. I live in the joyous expectancy of the best, and invariably the best comes to me. My favorite Bible verse, she said, with which I saturate my mind is, He giveth to all life and breath and all things. That's from the book of Acts, 17th chapter, 25th verse. She has learned that she's not dependent on people for joy, health, success, happiness, or peace of mind. She looks to the living Spirit Almighty within her for promotion, achievement, wealth, success, and happiness. Whosoever trusted in the Lord, happy. You see, that's from the book of Proverbs, 16th chapter, 20th verse. Contemplate promotion, success, achievement, illumination and inspiration, and the Spirit of the Almighty will move on your behalf, compelling you to express fully what you meditate on. Let go now and permit the infinite riches of the Infinite One to open up new doors for you. Let wonders happen in your life. In prayer therapy, avoid struggle and strain. Don't try to force things. How could you add power to omnipotence? Can you make a seed grow? You can't plant it in the ground, it will grow. The oak is in the acorn, the apple is in the apple seed. The archetype or pattern is there, but you must deposit it in the soil where it dies, undergoes dissolution, bequeaths its energy to another form of itself. Spiritual-minded man, he looks at an acorn, he sees a forest, you know. Yes, that's the way your subconscious works. It magnifies your good exceedingly. So, avoid strain, since this attitude is indicative of your unbelief. If you're worrying, fearful, anxious, well, that inhibits your good and brings about blocks, delays, and impediments in your life. What does fear do? That which I greatly feared has come upon me. Reverse it. That which I greatly love comes into my experience. Love is emotional attachment. In your subconscious is all the wisdom and power necessary to solve any problem. Your conscious mind is prone to look at external conditions and tends continually to struggle and to resist. Remember, however, it is the quiet mind that gets things done. Quiet your body periodically, tell it to be still and relax. It has to obey you. Your body moves as moved upon, your body is acted upon. Your body has no self-conscious intelligence, no volition or will. 
it moves as moved upon. You can play a melody of God in your body when your conscious mind is quiet and receptive. The wisdom of your subconscious rises to the surface mind and you receive your solution. A beauty parlor operator told me that the secret of her success was that every morning prior to opening her beauty salon, she had a quiet period in which she affirms, God's peace fills my soul and God's love saturates my whole being. God guides, prospers, and inspires me. I am illumined from on high, and His healing love flows from me to all my clients. Divine love comes in my door. Divine love goes out of my door. All those who come into my salon are blessed, healed, and inspired. The infinite healing presence saturates the whole place. This is the day the Lord hath made and I rejoice and give thanks for the countless blessings which come to my clients and to myself. Share this prayer written out on a card and reiterate these truths every morning and night. She gives thanks for all her clients, claiming that they're guided, prospered, happy and harmonious, and that God and his love flow through each one, filling up all the empty vessels in her life. She stated to me that following this prayer technique pattern at the end of three months, she had far more clients than she could handle, had to hire three additional operators. She had discovered the riches of effective prayer and is prospering beyond her fondest dreams. The sales manager told me that he had been fired because of excessive drinking on the job and because of being involved with one of the secretaries in the office. He was very distressed, dejected, and worried about his wife, his income, and his future. In talking with his wife later, I discovered that she was a chronic nagger and had tried unsuccessfully to dominate and control her husband. She was abnormally jealous and very possessive, and she clocked him in every evening, creating a scene if he were not home at a certain hour. He was emotionally and spiritually immature and did not handle the matter at all constructively. He deeply resented her nagging and her clocking of his arrival at home and retaliated by drinking and becoming involved with another woman. He said to me, I just wanted to get even with her. Both of them agreed it takes two, you know, to make a good marriage. It takes two to prosper. If a husband and wife will agree and prosper, agreement means harmony, they will prosper. They'll have all the money they need to do what they want to do when they want to do it. And when you have all the wealth you need to do what you want to do when you want to do it, you're as rich as creases. Both of them agreed to start a prayer process night and morning, realizing that as they prayed for each other, there could not possibly be any bitterness, hostility, or resentment, as divine love casts out everything unlike itself. She prayed night and morning as follows. My husband is God's man. God is guiding him to his true place. What he is seeking is seeking him. Divine love fills his soul. Divine peace fills his mind and heart. He has prospered in all his ways, spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, every way. By day and by night, he's advancing, moving forward and growing, spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, intellectually, in all ways, for life itself, is growth. There are harmony, peace, love, and understanding between us. It is divine right action and divine peace operating in our lives. And he prayed for his wife, night and morning, as follows. My wife is God's child. She's the daughter of the infinite, a child of eternity. Divine love fills her soul. Divine peace, harmony, and joy flow through her at all times. She is divinely guided and prospered in all her ways, for to prosper is to grow along all lines. There are harmony, peace, love, and understanding between us. I salute the divinity in her, and she salutes the divinity in me. As both of them became relaxed and peaceful about the situation, they realized that only good can come out of this situation. Soon, he received a phone call from the president of the company, calling him back, stating that he had heard. He had had a reconciliation with his wife, and at the same time, 
he praised him for his past achievements and accomplishments for the organization. Actually, his wife, without his knowledge, had visited the president of the company and had told him the whole story, how happy they now were and how the other woman had vanished out of his life. She told how they were now praying together. He was impressed, and she and her husband discovered very quickly the riches of scientific prayer. For the riches of the infinite are within you. You can know if you have succeeded in prayer by the way you feel, if you remain worried or anxious, if you're wondering how, when, and where, or through what source your answer will come, you're meddling. This indicates you do not really trust the wisdom of your subconscious. Avoid nagging yourself all day long, or even from time to time when you think of your desire. Likeness of touch is important. Remind yourself that infinite intelligence has taken care of it in divine order, far better than you can by tenseness of your conscious mind. For example, if you say, I need $5,000 by the 15th of next month, or the judge must make a decision for me by the first of the month, otherwise I lose my home, my mortgage, and so on, that's fear and anxiety and tension. What will that do? It will bring blocks and delays, impediments and difficulties into your life. Always go to the source. Remember, in peace and in confidence shall be your strength. When you're anxious, intense and worried, that will not bring about prosperity or peace of mind or health or anything. Go back to the source. Come to a place of absolute rest in your mind and say to yourself, reiterate these truths, it is done unto me as I believe. Go thy way as the house believes. All be done unto thee. All things be ready if the mind be so. Which means all I have to do is ready my mind to receive the benediction, the guidance, the wealth, the answer, the solution, the way out. According to my faith, it is done to me. Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Thy faith has made thee whole. And all things are ready if the mind be so. The light of God shines in me. The peace of the everlasting God fills my soul, and quietness and confidence shall be my strength. God gave me richly all things to enjoy. With God, all things are possible. Reiterate these simple truths. Say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul when I call upon him, and he answers me. He'll be with me in trouble. He set me on high because he had known my name. God has mainstream everlasting supply and ever-present help in time of trouble. Reiterate these truths. Read a psalm like the 23rd or 91st psalm and go over these psalms quietly, peacefully, and lovingly. You'll get to a point of rest and peace in your mind, and you'll realize that God is never late, that God is your instant and everlasting supply, guiding and directing you, revealing to you everything you need to know, opening up the door for you, revealing to you the solution, and God's riches are circulating in your life, and there's always a surplus. Then, when you act with that attitude of mind, the way will open up, the dawn will appear, and the shadows will flee away. But you won't get an answer by worry and fear and tension and anxiety. This will only attract more lack and more difficulties. So reverse it. Go back to the source. Reiterate the truth you know. Dwell upon the truths of God, such as God is absolute peace, absolute harmony, boundless wisdom, infinite intelligence, the ever-living one, the all-wise one, the all-knowing one, the self-renewing one, who knows all and sees all, the source of all blessings. That will quiet your mind, that will give you peace, and with the mind at peace, you always get the answer, for in quietness and learn to let go and relax. Do not give power to the externals or conditions. Give power and allegiance to the infinite presence and power within you. The swimming instructor tells you that you can float on the water, which will support you if you remain quiet still and at peace. But if you get nervous, tense, or fearful, you will sink. 
when you are seeking wealth, prosperity, success, or a spiritual healing, feel that you are immersed in the Holy Omnipresence, like you feel you're in the ocean or in a swimming pool. Realize the golden river of life, love, truth, and beauty are flowing through you now, transforming your whole being into the pattern of harmony, love, peace, and abundance. Feel yourself swimming in the great ocean of life. That sense of oneness will restore you, for he restoreth my soul. The following meditation will bring many wonderful things into your life. Listen to it and say, These truths are sinking into my subconscious mind. I picture them going from my conscious to my subconscious, like seeds I'm depositing in the soil. I know that I'm old-fashioned and create my own destiny. My fate is in the infinite being which created all things, and my faith in God is my fortune. This means an abiding faith in all things good. I live in the joyous expectancy of the best, and only the best comes to me. I know the harvest I will reap in the future because all my thoughts are God's thoughts, and the power of God is with my thoughts of good. My thoughts are the seeds of goodness, truth, beauty, and abundance. I now place my thoughts of love, peace, joy, success, abundance, security, and goodwill in the garden of my mind. This is God's garden. The glory and beauty of God will be expressed in my life, and I will know it. My garden will yield an abundant harvest. From this moment forward, I express life, love, and truth. I am radiantly happy and prosperous in all my ways and God multiplies my good exceedingly. To prosper means to succeed, to thrive, to turn out well. In other words, when you are prospering, you are growing spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, and intellectually. Never be envious or jealous of another person's wealth, promotion, or their diamonds or jewels, for that would impoverish you. That would attract lack and limitation to you. Rejoice in their success, their prosperity, and their wealth, and wish for them greater riches, because what you wish for the other, you're wishing for yourself, for you're the only thinker. What you think about the other, you're creating in your own mind, body, and experience, and also your pocketbook. This is why you rejoice in the success and the prosperity of the millions that others have. In order to truly prosper, it is necessary that you become a channel to which the life principle flows freely, harmoniously, joyously, and lovingly. I suggest that you establish a definite method of working and thinking, that you practice it regularly and systematically every day. One young man who consulted me had experienced a poverty complex for many years and had received no answers to his prayer. He had prayed for prosperity but the fear of poverty continuously weighed on his mind, and naturally, he attracted more lack and limitation than prosperity. The subconscious mind accepts the dominant of two ideas. Change your mind from a belief in poverty, but begin to believe in God's riches, which are all around you, infinite riches. After talking with me, he began to realize that his thought image of wealth produces wealth that every thought is created unless it is neutralized by a counterthought of greater intensity. Furthermore, he realized that his thought and belief about poverty were greater than his belief in the infinite riches all around him. Consequently, he changed his thoughts and kept them changed. I wrote out a prosperity prayer for him as follows. It will benefit you. I know there is only one source, the life principle, the living spirit from which all things flow. It created the universe and all things are contained in it. I'm a focal point of the divine presence. My mind is open and receptive. I am a free-flowing channel for harmony, beauty, guidance, wealth, and the riches of the infinite. I know that wealth, health, and success are released from within and appear in the without. I am now in harmony with the infinite riches within and without and I know these thoughts are sinking into my subconscious mind and will be reflected on the screen of space. I wish for everyone all the blessings of life. I am open and receptive to the divine riches, spiritual, 
mental and material, and they flow to me in avalanches of abundance. The young man focused his thoughts on God's riches rather than poverty, and made it a special point never to deny what he affirmed. Many people pray for wealth, but deny it an hour later by saying, I can't afford this, or I can't make ends meet. They are making a mockery of their prayer. They're like the man that gets into a taxi in New York, and he's going to the airport. On the way, he says to the taxi driver, Oh, take me back home. I forgot my passport. So he goes back. Then he said on the way again, Oh, I better go to my club. I forgot my wallet. So the taxi driver takes him to his club, and he says, Oh, I forgot some letters at my grandmother's. So off he goes to the grandmother, and he gives a half a dozen directions in half an hour to the taxi driver. Finally, the taxi driver takes him into the police station because he realizes he's mental. Well, now, this is the way millions of people pray, even in the New Thought movement. They give a half a dozen directions to their subconscious mind in a half an hour or an hour. The subconscious is so confused and perplexed it doesn't know what to do. It doesn't do anything, so it results in plain frustration. Frustration comes from frustrated to deceive to work for nothing. So you don't put a seed in the ground and then dig it up. Stop contradicting what you've affirmed. And that's the way people pray for prosperity. They're constantly denying what they're affirming, and they're making a mockery of prayer. So this young man focused his thoughts on God's riches rather than poverty. And he stopped saying, I can't afford this, or I can't buy that piano, or I can't buy that car. You never use the word can't. Can't is the only devil in the universe. Your subconscious takes you literally and blocks all your good. Now in a month's time, his whole life was transformed. He affirmed the truth I just mentioned morning and evening for about ten minutes, slowly and quietly, engraving them in his mind, knowing what he was doing, believing what he was doing, knowing that he was actually writing down these truths in his subconscious mind, causing the latter to be activated and to release its hidden treasures. For the gold mine is in your subconscious. The diamond mine is there. It's the source of all the riches of heaven. Although this man had been a salesman for ten years with rather dim prospects for the future, suddenly he was made a sales manager, $30,000 a year plus prime benefits. Your subconscious has ways that you know not. It's impossible to impregnate your subconscious mind with the idea of wealth and be unsuccessful. It's impossible to impregnate your subconscious with the idea of success. In good heavens, you are born to win, to succeed. The infinite can't fail. You're born to triumph. Send. Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Let your prayer be by day and by night. I'm advancing, moving forward, and growing. God gave me richly all things to enjoy.